Perfect. So before we get cracking on uh, what's new with the SolidWorks solution, we just wanted to highlight some of the new things at Javelin. We know that uh, some of you have attended over the last couple of days, have uh, seen a couple of these things, but we'll, so we'll go through it fairly quick. Um, you know, the biggest thing we wanted to make sure everybody's aware of is our expansion across the country. So we have uh, six offices now, um, really from coast to coast, so right from Dartmouth to Surrey. Uh, we're headquartered, uh, Jake and I are in our Oakville office right now. Um, doing this broadcast, but uh, a big part of that growth was with the acquisition of, uh, of one of the or the, the largest Western uh, reseller automated design systems. So we're now one big happy family, and it's uh, you know great to have them on board on the team. You know what does that mean to you? It's uh, we do have extended support coverage, so we do have the longest hours that out of uh, you know probably out of any bar out there. It's uh, it's pretty incredible crossing the time zones, how many uh, open hours of support coverage that we have nowadays. Um, big pool of experts, so we have uh, 27 certified SolidWorks professionals on staff. Um, we're actually up to four lead application engineers now. I haven't uh, updated that slide, and uh, and we have uh, a bunch of experts on simulation and on the EPDM side. Um, also, uh, increased offerings as well. So, with uh, because we cover such a large customer base, we're able to su to support um, product specialists in uh, in PLM. So, we've brought on Ares PLM electrical design and we're expanding out to the structural side as well and uh, and, in, and of course online training is that is an important part of the solution as well um, to be able to hit all the all the time zones at once is, uh, is the easiest way um, just briefly on Ares PLM so we do have um, you know really it's an extension of ePDM it has uh, just amazing integration with the enterprise PDM product where you can automatically publish bombs and uh, and register all the parts and assemblies that are, are in there and it allows you to start taking advantage of capabilities like project management, um, taking advantage of, of uh, bill of materials and uh, change management as well. So, um, you know, really, if, there, if you have complexities that EPDM just, uh, you know, it, it's quite uh, capable. But sometimes you do hit a couple walls related to some of these topics, and we're we're quite happy to uh, let you know what you can and can't do with any of these products. And uh, you know, this would be could be a consideration. Um, so let's uh, let's move on with the SolidWorks solution. This is the meat and potatoes of the presentation today. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in on the right. I'm going to uh, Jake and I will both be presenting here. So when Jake's presenting, I'm going to try to uh, knock off some of the questions. So feel free to type them in. Um, you know, before we we start talking specifically about the products, I thought we just highlight uh, what we refer to as the Javelin system. So it's really about the flow of information and how teams are coordinated. Well. EPDM is naturally at the heart of that. It's just such an important part of the of the picture to store all your files, keep track of revisions, coordinate the team. Um, the SolidWorks solution is about SolidWorks electrical. It's about documentation. It's about simulation, and it's about 3D design. Those are the, the main legs of the simulation of, of there. Um, an important part of the solution is the 3D printing. So we picked up. Uh, we've been in the 3D printing for a number of years now. Um, you know, the newest edition. Uh, this year is the entire Stratasys product line. So we have, uh, because Stratasys purchased Obja, um, so we have a, a great solution there. And you know, an important part of automating the process is getting those STLs out. We can do that as part of an EPDM approval or registration, if you like. Um, coordinating with other locations is an important part of the solution that we help uh, any customer do. Um, the newest addition is the EPLM. So we use uh, Aris there, and it's about um, automatically sending information from me PDM for uh, managing PLM type functions of your business. Um, of course, ERP is an important piece of the puzzle. So we don't uh, uh, sell or promote certain ERPs. What we do is is help customers integrate. So it's about driving information in there. It's about pulling information back into SolidWorks. So just briefly on what is uh, SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. Um, you know, actually, just before I go to it in depth, there I do want to ask quick poll question. I have a few polls I want to ask um, just before we get into the meat and potatoes of the content. And I am curious about which solutions you have today. So do you uh, already have SolidWorks Enterprise PDM? Um, do, you, uh, do you currently use simulation, uh, composer for your technical documentation, or electrical, or do you have 3D printing? So you can uh, check all of them if you have all of them in house. Um, we do have a number of clients that do have every single one of our solutions, and it's uh, great to, to of course, see that because customers do recognize that you know those are important pieces to the puzzle. Um, but I think most common uh, customers, I think 
you know, a good portion of our customers have two. Um, two to three is, is quite common. And, uh, and of course, we're uh, obviously happy to help you with whatever is your next step. You can fill that in, it would be great. Okay, we're closing up the poll in here. Thanks very much for voting. All right. So what is Enterprise PDM? It's, uh, so we only have about a third of attendees that, that have it today, um, which is you know, great, to, great to see. So that's a decent uh, amount. But uh, for the other two thirds, what is it? It's a bit, uh, very easy way to manage revisions and coordinate files. So it has, um, it's built on Windows Explorer, so incredibly easy to learn and use. Um, it has integrated uh, workflows so that center uh, image there is about a flow chart that passes files from one person to another. And then it's uh, because everything's in a database, it's just so easy to find and reuse information. So it's all on an SQL database backbone. Um, you know, it makes it easy to, to get that stuff. So let's uh, today's webinar is about focusing what's new in there. We don't have focus, we don't have time to really talk too much about uh, all the stuff there on what it does. Um, so what is new? It's about uh, automated cache management is a really nice thing for customers that want to use ePDM for all those uh, peripheral type files like like uh, library components or templates or toolbox, you know, things which you want it to automatically for, like push out and force out to have all the latest and greatest. Um, or for security reasons, if you uh, if you're in the military uh, space and you need to uh, satisfy like our ITAR regulations or stuff like that. Um, that automated cache management will automatically swipe the, the contents of secure folders um, before you or as you leave the network. Um, latest version checkout options is really nice. So it's, uh, it allows you to, um, to control which, which uh, versions are on a, computer's, uh, a computer, but also give them access to the earlier ones. Um, you can now configure the columns and, and where you use contains and checkout to see more info where you need it. And also, um, the reference version column allows you to easily select full sub-assemblies with a single check mark. You don't have to do like control or shift selecting anymore to get those files that you need. So some nice enhancements, and I'll let uh, Jake show you some of those before we go into what I consider some of the more exciting enhancements. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like those ones a lot, Eric. Yeah, so let's talk about what's new in Enterprise PDM for 2014. So really, uh, they, they continue to add a lot of new and exciting functionality, really to help us streamline our design process and really just ensure that we're working with the most up-to-date information. That's really the core of uh, what EPDM is. So first in 2014, there's new options that have been added to users and groups to keep the local cache up-to-date. So these options allow you to clear the cache on logout and refresh the cache again back on login. So this can be a great security feature. So these settings, they're also folder specific and work recursively in the subfolders. So this is important for users who already have a, a certain templates or library items that need to always have the latest revision uh, or for administrators who need to make sure that users uh, who are not attached to the network don't have sensitive files on their computer. So it is very nice to kind of clear that out to make sure you don't go home with sensitive files and nobody wants that. Also, there's a new checkbox that has been added uh, to, to the reference node in the settings dialog called Enable Get the Latest Versions command in SOLIDWORKS. It's kind of a long, uh, long uh, thing to, to remember, but basically this allows users who choose the settings to always work with latest to the ability to also get a version while working in SOLIDWORKS. So this can be important because uh, you want to ensure that all the files are checked out and referencing the latest version, but also want to have the Git uh, access to other versions. So you, you have a little bit more uh, you know, functionality if you choose to turn that option on. So that's new in 2014 on the administrative side. So when we log into our vault here, you'll notice that Enterprise PDM is updating the cache. So that's what it's doing. It's refreshing the cache on my local machine when I log in. So without any password, you won't have any cache on your computer. As soon as you type your password in, everything comes up, and it's just as fast as ever. That's, again, the new cache management feature in 2014. So let's look at the Contains tab uh, for this assembly quick. So first, in the Enterprise PDM 2014, you can customize the display of the columns in the Contains tab. Uh, also, in the Where Use tab, the Copy Tree and Check In and Check Out dialog box. 
So you can actually choose which ones uh, you want to display. So you can check the ones you want and uncheck the ones you don't want, just to manage it a little bit e easier. So in this case, we can add, a, say, a description column to the Contains tab. You can move it over if you want. And this can be really important, uh, especially for people uh, who use their file naming convention or want to sort uh, by description or sort by quantity. So you can really uh, you know, show any of these and uh, navigate your assemblies within Enterprise PDM a lot easier now uh, that you can customize these on the fly. Also, this assembly is already open in SolidWorks itself. You can see in the checkout dialog that we have the same ability to add columns and also to access and expand the columns in the assembly. So uh, this new ability is shown in the reference selection controls. So you notice that there's now two uh, checkboxes, two sets of checkboxes in 2014. So these allow easy check out or get of all uh, children uh, on a parent. So basically if you check one of those boxes, you'll get all the children underneath it too um, automatically selected. You also have the ability to easily see the warnings that might be uh, presented. So if there are no warnings, they're not going to show up. And they even traverse all the way down into the sub-assemblies. So if there's a warning in a sub-assembly, it's going to show all the way at the top because uh, you're checking in that overall assembly. It's going to let you know, hey, something about this assembly. It could be a sub-assembly or a part, but something about it uh, has some error. So we'll, we'll traverse to the top just to really give you a little bit uh, clearer idea or indication uh, if there's going to be any errors on check-in. So back in SolidWorks, the first thing that you're probably going to notice uh, in the task pane is there's a new column for reference version. There's that reference version again. So this column lets us know what version of a file uh, was referenced in an assembly when it was checked in. So when the assembly was checked in, what version of that file was checked in with it? Not necessarily a file that we have right now, but upon check-in. So uh, when you dig down into the sub-assembly, you can also see that we're working with the latest version of this file when the assembly was originally checked in, it was only version 1. So again, a little bit better visibility so we can understand how this file was uh, checked in, at what version, and how the files around it uh, were looking at that time. Also, the child quick info uh, points towards this uh, older reference version as well. So since this is referencing an older version, uh, you might want to use the git command uh, to get the older version file. So again, if you enable that, uh, you'll be able to get uh, a previous version of that file. So as expected, though, we're going to get some warnings uh, that the file is not using the latest version. And that's understandable because we got a version that wasn't latest. And this is very clearly indicated in the child quick info. So you get a lot of indi indications, and it's really just going to make it uh, a little bit clearer for us uh, to understand and to work with the files uh, that we use in Enterprise PDM. All right, so moving along with uh, what I consider the more exciting enhancements with uh, EPDM today, because I, I mean, those enhancements are great, but a lot of them come down to the subtleties, and, and they're clearly user-driven, which is, you know, you do want to see SOLIDWORKS doing. Um, but uh, these next two enhancements are really about uh, pushing the envelope and entering new, new areas and opening up possibilities. You know, first off is the Microsoft uh, Office integration. So there's now a toolbar that can be installed for Microsoft Office. It's, it's a completely uh, complementary toolbar available at the SOLIDWORKS website. Um, and it does actually work with the later release of 2013 as well, just as a side note. It's not just in 2014, but it allows you to do a lot of the same things that you could do with SOLIDWORKS core product um, with, uh, of course, the EPDM add-in there. So checking in, checking out, searching, and participating in workflow. Um, you know, one of the most exciting things from EPDM this year is the new web portals. So uh, SOLIDWORKS, uh, the Enterprise PDM web portal, um, you know, in the past we had one that was developed on ActiveX and that was limited to Internet Explorer. Well, this new web portal is completely redone um, and is programmed in a way that works on any browser. Um, so that's fantastic. And, uh, and it also has a mobile version that, that works really well for, uh, for any mobile device. So we're going to show you a little bit of content for both of those right now. Let's just queue it up. All right. 
So here we're looking at the enterprise uh, PDM web portal, and uh, you can see that I'm working with uh, the Chrome browser here. So I, I purposely didn't use Internet Explorer just to highlight that it's uh, you know any browser is completely supported um, with the way it's programmed. Um, with, uh, and then browsing over to the clamp assembly, you'll see that I get a nice preview of it. So that works with uh, with any browser as well. Um, if you do have the Internet Explorer browser, you do get a full eDrawings preview. So that's the one area that they haven't ported over yet to uh, to the other browsers. Um, you can see if I'm working with an electrical project. Here's that. This is a SolidWorks electrical file that's been published. Um, and it uh, allows, the nice thing about working in with that is that all the hyperlinks work. So uh, when you publish a SOLIDWORKS electrical project, uh, any references turn into page references and, uh, and you can follow those to automatically navigate to the right sheet. And, uh, and the symbols are referenced automatically to a high level uh, planning view. So it's nice to kind of go between those, those two areas. Um, when you're working with drawings, again, you can get a preview in any, any browser. Um, just to get that kind of static preview. If you if you want that eDrawings preview, requires the Internet Explorer. Um, and then there are tabs at the top that allow you to interact with the content. So you can uh, send through an approval process um, or approve it on the fly. So you don't need to have ePDM installed in order to review and approve now, which is a key difference. Um, you can just click the mobile site at the bottom if you want to access the mobile area. Um, but really, where that's more useful is not when you're uh, when you're on the web because you know it makes things a little bit bigger and you don't have all the information that you want. But where it really helps out is when you're looking at um, the ePDM browser, or sorry, when you're looking on your iPhone. So here we're looking at the exact same vault on the iPhone, and I can navigate through um, to the files, click on that exact same file, and uh, and you can get a preview of it. And um, and actually, the nice thing here is that with iOS, you have full integration with eDrawings. So it'll, it prompts you to open up an e-drawings, and you can navigate over and, uh, and spin it around. Um, you know, similarly to, um, to the full web browser, you can access the, um, the content from SolidWorks Electrical as well. So it's just simply publishing out as, as a SolidWorks Electrical uh, PDF. Um, you can also access the drawings. You can see, I like how you can see the days and the states. So that's something that's unique to the web browser to see how many days has it been waiting for, for approval. Okay. And uh, and then, oops, I think that's actually all the content we have. There we go. So we'll, uh, so with that, we'll kind of bring it back uh, to some of the new things in the SolidWorks solution. All right. Thanks for queuing that up. There's it. So on the rendering side, so we uh, this is something that we're on the fence on whether we should include it in previous um, uh, webinars or today's. Uh, on the rendering side, it's you know because it uh, really is an add-on, although it is available with SolidWorks Professional, um, we thought we'd include it here. Um, so there are some nice uh, capabilities for you know, core SolidWorks as well, however, where we can go save out as PNGs and uh, do an alpha channel. And what that means is you can have transparency um, and you can use those screen captures more easily in documentation and uh, have the text appear through the background and stuff like that. Um, there are some enhancements with uh, just the environment that you're working with as well. And then lastly, on uh, uh, working with PhotoView 360, there's some nice enhancements with cartoon rendering and, uh, and there's some really nice stuff, some new techniques related to working with the sun. So I'm not going to uh, you know, steal Jake's finger at all because I know he loves uh, chatting about this one, so I'll let him take it away. All right, thanks Eric for uh, yeah, not stealing my thunder. I do love that one. It might just be uh, one of my favorite enhancements. So uh, in SolarWorks 2014, they really include several new enhancements, uh, really just to help you showcase your models and bring your 3D geometry to life. So after you spend all that work, how do you really take it to the next level? So as Eric mentioned, you can now export your model uh, including the motion studies to an LXO file to be used with modal luxology. So if you remember last year, uh, luxology actually gave us uh, a lot of their uh, materials and we can use those in rendering. Some really nice stuff, uh, some ice cubes, fur, you know, different types of wood. So they gave us those files to use and now in 2014, we can actually export our SOLIDWORKS models to their rendering software. So if you do have luxology, you can now uh, export them uh, to, to there as well. So it is really nice. 
And also, the current view, as Eric mentioned, can be saved directly as a PNG file uh, to be inserted into your PowerPoints or screen captures or whatnot. And you can change to make the background transparent and even adjust the dots per pixel. So you can even technically have a higher uh, output than your screen resolution because you can uh, intrinsically adjust that DPI uh, individually. Also, to better showcase your models itself, a realistic backdrop can be used. Um, in 2014, uh, there's a lot of new scenes and landscapes that let you convey your ideas uh, a lot better. So you'll notice when you go into the, the scenes, there's just a whole lot more, more than I can even uh, fit on the screen. A lot of outdoor ones, some mud and snow, a lot of really nice things that you can do uh, just to kind of showcase your outdoor models a little bit better. Also, uh, additionally, when switching to the spherical environment, you can now flatten the floor for some added realism. So a spherical environment is kind of like being inside of a beach ball, and uh, your model would be floating in the center. So it is nice, you can spin it around, but really you want to flatten that floor so your model's sitting on the ground. So the shadows cast uh, realistically, and it just gives a little more depth perception there. So in 2014, we can do that. We can flatten the floor. You can uh, very easily switch between the flattened floor and the default or the spherical floor to really just test out which appearance uh, is best. And of course, in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, the PhotoView 360 has not been left out at all. They've actually done a lot of nice enhancements in 2014 to the PhotoView. So there's a new cartoon option uh, that I believe Eric has an op uh, a screen capture of a little bit later on. It's, really, it's a very neat uh, way to render a cartoon. kind of looks like you sketched it or you drew it in a book. Uh, you can choose the line types, how thick they are, what colors they're penciled in by. So it is a really neat option if you're going to make manuals or some content uh, for your websites. Also, it's just a simple matter of uh, generating the final rendering. And you can really just explore a lot of new ways to promote your product. There's a lot of other effects in the post-processing capabilities offered by PhotoView 360. Um, so you really don't need to rely on third-party programs like uh, you know, Photoshop or Paint or anything like that. This post-processing in SOLIDWORKS is actually quite, uh, it's quite lovely, actually. So some products, uh, like this pergola here, they're actually meant to be outside. So what they've done in 2014 for SOLIDWORKS is they've given us a new type of light called sunlight. So normal lights, uh, like spotlights or point lights we had, they were always you know, kind of white and harsh and... What they've done now in 2014 is they've given us the ability to have a sunlight. And this is really neat. So basically, if you put sun in there, the first thing you do is you set up the north direction with respect to the model. Then you choose the geographic location, the latitude, and longitude to be defined. And then, it goes one step further, you select the time zone, the date, and the time of day to simulate. So you put in all this stuff in the sunlight, and it basically positions the sun in the exact position at the right orientation and even changes the hue. So if it's a little closer to the horizon, it'll pick up a little more of those red tones. If it's directly at noon or top of you, it'll be almost white. So it's a really neat uh, way to kind of show your models outside. It's really invaluable to evaluate how your design will look in different environments or in different locations around the world. Maybe you're building this uh, pergola and you're going to ship it over to France. You want to see what it's going to look like there in autumn. So I really, really like this. You can even take this. What we're able to do is actually. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to. Oh. On my favorite feature to do. Audio image. Oh, looks like they're coming back. Okay. 
think it sounds better now. Sorry about that, guys. We'll uh, we'll continue and uh, back up. Yeah, we, we we don't want you to miss my favorite feature in SolidWorks 2014. So I'll take a step back here. So we were just setting up a solar access study, which basically takes the sunlight in its position and longitude, latitude, time of day, even year. And what we're able to do is we're able to run this through a wizard. And we're actually able to uh, to take it from sunrise to sunset. And it's going to change the hue. It's going to move the shadow around. And it's really just going to show you what an entire day looks like with your uh, your device or your model sitting outside. So it's a really neat way to kind of animate it to show how the shadows move around, how the light changes. And of course, you can render this with the PhotoView 360 to get some really nice and crisp uh, renderings uh, to output with this solar axis study. So it really does have a lot of really nice, uh, nice effects. And you can definitely output this and save it and really just blow, uh, blow people away with how amazing uh, SolarWorks 2014 and the solar axis study really is. So that is my personal favorite uh, feature in SolarWorks 2014, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it too. All right, I know Jake was promising this one. We do have a, a nice sample here, just to give you a sense of the effects that you can produce with that cartoon rendering. So those are a couple different options for you with that uh, those thicker outlines and uh, and just roughing out the shadows and sticking to some uh, some main colors. So you know, really nice effects that you can use to help boost some of your marketing circles. Uh, so moving away from the rendering side, uh, we did want to talk a little bit about the SolarWorks simulation aspect. So one of the, the big things this year was the auto mapping of bolts. So if you do use Toolbox, um, it can recognize the Toolbox fastener that you're using and put in the properties for a bolt, including splitting the faces and doing creep torque and, and all that other great stuff. You know, just a little bit of warning on that one. You do want to make sure you monitor it afterwards to make sure it makes sense for your study because it does use some rules of thumb, of course, for what, um, you know, what the recommended preload is. Uh, really nice enhancements related to result visualization. So you can uh, very easily uh, manipulate how you're looking at the results right from the graphics area, right from that uh, the legend on there, which is really nice. And they combine a couple menus that uh, sometimes it was difficult to find. You know what chart options you were looking for because there's a couple options, whether it was in the in the chart options or the settings or stuff like that. And uh, and they combined it out to one with a couple tabs, so it makes it much easier to to find what you're looking for. Um, comparing results across configurations has been added as well, so this makes it uh, much easier to do scenarios, you know, punch holes and reduce material and to see how that will affect um, the, the results and, uh, and stress and see what that looks like compared to other designs. Contact visualization is nice as well, so that is, that's where you have all your bonded or no penetration contacts and you can color code them and see what your, uh, what your design is set up. Now one of my favorite things about that, and you can see um, the contact visual visualization before you run the study and also after um, post-processing is, uh, is include where stuff was actually in contact and, uh, and you get to monitor it with, uh, in relation to the mesh. So it really gives good insight into whether the, the study was done accurately. Um, so nice stuff related to symmetric results. And then lastly, on the 2D contact uh, stress support. So you can now see pressure plots when you're doing those 2D studies. So that can be quite handy for um, if you do have uh, complex shapes that uh, the pressure in an area is, is a critical factor. So with that, I'll let uh, Jake take it away and show you some of that in action. All right, some simulation in 2014. This is good stuff. So let's take a look at uh, some of the new enhancements uh, that they've done in SolidWorks simulation uh, for 2014. First, as Eric mentioned, uh, anyone who's ever worked with fasteners uh, in simulation know that it can take up quite a bit of time to set those up in simulation. So this is really a thing of the past with 2014, where you can now automatically detect the toolbox fasteners and map those across to uh, simulation connectors. So it's a really quick uh, process. It saves a huge amount of time uh, in the setup of your model. But more importantly, it really just ensures that you have accurate information about the connector, such as the size of the fastener, the type, uh, the material, strength data, and even the preloads uh, are all going to be put in there for you. Uh, so we've tested those and uh, you know, just to make sure that when you use them, uh, everything should be uh, hunky-dory. 
So we've also made some uh, really nice improvements in the results interface. So after you run that simulation, so there's a lot more uh, efficient way to interact with the model and to make changes. So basically this, uh, this icon over here, the, the rainbow sort of uh, bar here, this is going to be your go-to place. So anything you need to do about your model, uh, first check here. Just right click on it. And what they've basically done is consolidated everything through this button. So you don't have to go dig through options menus, try to find simulation options and all this stuff. Basically everything is accessed right through this bar. So you can change the stress plots, you can change the result data, what you're looking at. So go here first in 2014 for simulation. It's really nice to kind of keep everything uh, organized in one, uh, in one spot. You can adjust uh, you know, the definition, the chart settings, show minimum, maximum value. So it's really, it's really a lot more intuitive. You can uh, adjust the legend scale also. Just click and then set a new limit. So if you do want to isolate certain areas of the stress results, you can do that very easily now, uh, now that they've uh, put everything here at your fingertips. There's also been some great enhancements to 2D simplification. One of the things uh, added is the improved ability to review contact situations, where one of the common results people are looking for is contact pressure. So gears are a great uh, example of contact pressure, and we can show that now in 2D simplification. So you can show it either as a plot or as vectors, and it really enhances you, the ability to understand where load transfer is occurring. And the ability now to do this in 2D simplification really speeds up that whole process of understanding. It allows you to run more iterations to get your design down uh, just right. Something else that has also been improved in simulation 2014 is the ability to apply materials. Now you have a connection to a materiality website, which enables us to access a much broader range of advanced material properties. And these uh, have actually been tested in the real world. So if you go into your materials in SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2014, you can actually launch and go onto a website. It's really neat how this works. So basically all you need to do is select the type of study you're interested in. So in our case, it's going to start with nonlinear. Then you pick the material model you're interested in, such as uh, plastic and so on, and then pick a subclass and a class for that material. So for this example, I'm going to choose plastics and then uh, locate the materials, and it'll come back with all the plastics they've actually tested. So they've done real-world testing on all these materials and enable us to use them in our SOLIDWORKS simulation. So it's great to know someone out there has actually tested them. So once it displays the materials, you can basically scroll down and select the one that you want. And then when you select one, in this case, Delrin, I've selected, it doesn't stop there. It goes one step further and asks you, what temperature do you want to test uh, this material at? Or there could be other properties, too. In this case, for Delrin, it gives me three options for temperature. Do I want it in a very cold, kind of lukewarm, or hot? Because Delrin will respond quite differently depending on the temperature. So after that, all you do is you start a conversion, and it's going to extract that test data that they actually tested from Delrin at that temperature I selected and give me this nice curve that I can then click Download, and it'll download it right into my material database uh, for SOLIDWORKS simulation. So now I'm using real test results right in my SOLIDWORKS simulation. So there's a lot more you know, advanced materials now that we're able to use thanks to this website. And it's going to be expanding all the time, too. So look for new ones to you know, pop up each day, almost. We also have some great enhancements on uh, contact visualization. So we'll open another model here, this kind of a piano-shaped model here, to look at how the connectors, how it, it contacts uh, together. So basically, there's a new uh, contact visualization plot that you can run, and it's going to let us see how uh, all these different parts are connected together, or where the contexts are. So each uh, contact type, so bonded or whatnot, is going to have its own color. So in this case, I'm showing all of the bonded ones that are red. You can also select just individual parts to see how these are bonded together. So in this area here, we actually see it's not bonded from this sort of triangle place to the board because it's not highlighted in red. So 
maybe we forgot to add that one. So it can be a very nice uh, troubleshooting tool for complex assemblies just to see how things bonded. Also another area that's improved is within visualizing results for symmetry models. So in this example, we have a symmetry plane for this model that we previously designed basically to run this simulation a lot quicker. It will basically run two times faster if we only have half the polygons. But now after we run it, there's new options to show it in the, uh, say, unsymmetric or in the full view. So it will run twice as fast because we're only analyzing half of it, but then we can show it uh, in, in the full model. So it really helps for conveying uh, the result information to other people in the company who might not be familiar with simulation or with the symmetry. So you can really display to them a lot easier. Um, and also you can export this into eDrawings so it looks like the full model and not just the half of the model too. We'll talk about eDrawings in, in a minute here. That's a really cool capability also. There's also another valuable tool for uh, viewing results. And that's a new capability to compare the simulation results across different configurations. So I really like this one, and I know Eric likes this one too, because basically when you're running uh, different configurations and simulations, maybe some of them have holes in them, some of them have big slots, and some of them are just flat panels. You really uh, would like to see them uh, compared across the configurations. You can really select which configuration uh, is the best. They've also done a lot of uh, work in increasing the performance. So in the simulation settings now, you can control when the results get loaded. So if you're working on a lot of SOLIDWORKS features, you can now turn off simulation results being loaded on the model until simulation is actually open. So if you're used to kind of unchecking the add-in for simulation because you didn't want it to use a lot of your uh, resources, you can now just uh, not have to do that because checking this option will only load them when you start simulation itself. So this really means that if you have the simulation add in active, it's not really going to hurt your performance uh, at all in 2014. So there's another great feature they've added for people who work with very large designs, and this is the large problem direct sparse solver. So this solver is really tailored to models that contain millions of degrees of freedom. I asked our uh, PhD in the office what a normal, how many uh, degrees of freedom a normal model would have, and he said it, the maximum you would have is about 400,000 in a normal model. And so this new large problem direct sparse solver it has a couple million degrees that it can handle, so really quite a bit larger problems this thing can tackle. Also, if you use the automatic uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation, it will detect uh, which solver to use, and it might choose the large problem direct sparse solver, I might choose a different one, but at least there's a new tool in its toolbox to choose if it does get up to, you know, upwards of 400,000 degrees of freedom. It now has this new tool to actually solve for you. So that is really nice. The other um, nice thing about this solver is that it has support for multi-core. So not only can it solve large problems, uh, you know, millions of degrees of freedom, but you can actually do it a lot quicker uh, than before. So it does have multi-core support. So overall, some really nice capabilities in uh, SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2014. They made it a little bit easier to use and to access our results, but at the same time, they're really pushing the envelope and uh, giving us some, some results and some viewing capabilities that we haven't really had in the past, and it's really nice to be able to have those in 2014. All right, time for another poll question here. Um, you know, we saw some of kind of the major solutions of SOLIDWORKS, of course, with the, with the data management and the validation. Um, we do, uh, we're, we're still going to talk a little bit about the technical documentation and, and uh, electrical tomorrow. Um, but we are curious about, you know, are there priorities that you guys have in the next year that we should be uh, working with you on? So if you could share those with us, would be great. Um, you know, I think most commonly for customers that don't have PDM, I think that uh, is quite commonly on the, on the priority list. Um, I know that uh, companies that are doing design validation today, like they get a taste for it, but they are uh, quite commonly looking to do more and, and better better simulation or more in line with, uh, you know, different failure methods and stuff like that. So that's something that, that might be uh, interesting to look at as well. But, uh, but definitely it's awesome if you could share some of that with us and, uh, you know, make sure that we can work with you as best we can. All right, so we'll close that up. Thank you so much for everybody voting. 
All right, so uh, we thought we'd combine circuit works and flow simulation together. Uh, the reason we did that is, you know, the, the biggest enhancement with both of those products is actually the integration. So you can now import uh, circuit works properties such as um, like how much wattage it uses into the flow simulation because electronics cooling is, I would say it's probably oh, at least over a third of the, the flow simulation problems that uh, customers are solving with it. It's, it's quite high, a big requirement. Um, there are some other nice uh, stuff related to circuit work for easier to work with the components and uh, working with uh, counting the instances and, and uh, selecting by material properties, stuff like that. There are some nice enhancements to plastics as well. Um, you know, the focus with SolidWorks plastics has really been to open it up to the masses. Um, you know, this is not a product that's just meant for, for a specialized designer who only does mold design. It's actually designed for, for any customer that does has plastic parts. That's really where they're headed with this product because there's, um, they're making it easier. They're getting better uh, feedback. And the goal is really to give, um, to give you better plastic part design um, with be with better um, with no residual stresses as a, as opposed to like in a warped part right um, you know by using this tool so that's really where they're going and there's some really nice enhancements there that uh, we just don't have time to cover in this um, or to show in this webinar um, SolidWorks Composer is uh, is of course you know first off it is a, a new name change so this is the product that you, we used to refer to as 3D Via Composer. So it's now uh, referred to as SolidWorks Composer. It's brought it very tightly into the SolidWorks family of products. Um, it's about creating technical documentation with uh, with arrows and imagery, and it's it's really focused on imagery and interactive content. So it's uh, it's much different way of thinking about uh, communicating than just a, a SolidWorks drawing or a, or an e-drawing. So that's really what it's all about. You know, the new thing that's uh, or one of the newer things with it is this assortment of tools. So uh, Composer now comes with a full set of uh, tools or hands, and they all have their different animations, which is nice to kind of uh, annotate or, or communicate a step-by-step -step procedure. So um, you know, without further ado, I'll let Jake to show a little bit of those new tools within Composer. All right. So yeah, so in Composer, uh, in Composer 2014, there's uh, an all-new uh, library of tools that you can use, as Eric was mentioning. And these are really neat. Basically, it's a library on the right side here. And you can drag out uh, different tools, so for instance, uh, pliers. And they'll have different sort of configurations, or I like to think of them as superpowers. So if you drag out a pliers, it's going to have an open and closed uh, configuration. If you bring out uh, you know, a scissors, it's going to have maybe a, a cutting or a snipping configuration. So these tools actually can uh, can interact and do different things. Another example, if you bring out a screwdriver, it's going to want to snap to uh, you know any sort of round objects like screws or holes. And you can tell it if you want it to be rotating to the right or rotating to the left. And it'll actually put those arrows in automatically. So these tools, they're, they're not just objects. They actually have uh, you know some interactive abilities with them. And it's really nice to just be able to drag it out to visually show people what they should be doing, screwing it or unscrewing it, rather than have to type up uh, all these documents to show them uh, you know, what, or to rather tell them what to do. It's just a lot nicer to, to show them with Composer. So that's really the area that, uh, that I liked about uh, Composer. I thought I'd show today uh, just briefly. All right, so we did want to make a, a couple uh, announcements about Jabware as well. For those of you out there who aren't familiar with Jabware, this is uh, this is really all the development that Jabware has done over the last, geez, I guess uh, 15 years now, or over 15 years. Um, so it started off with uh, like property links was a big one, just to manage properties. Um, but there's still a good fit, even though SolidWorks has improved the property management over the years, it still is a good fit for customers who do uh, who want to link their properties um, or pull a property from their ERP systems. So that works really great. Um, property Links Bomb is about uh, spitting out the materials in an automated way out to uh, ERP in a standard format. Um, Plantworks is about doing a large layout design, so very quick layout and, and kind of simplify some of the tool set to do that. Enterprise Assistant is about automating on top of Enterprise. Um, the first one actually at the top there is the Javelin support add-in. So this is um, an add-in that uh, allows you to quickly access support and also generate quotes for 3D parts. So we're, um, we do, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a side business for us, but we do do, um, we are, we do do prints 
for our customers of 3D parts. Um, and you can you can do it right from this add-in, which is nice. You just send the model and, and get a pricing. The nice thing about it is that it, it'll generate a price for you without having to even uh, give us a call. So you can just get a sense of that right out of the gate. Um, and then lastly, we do have a number of uh, labs products um, that we did for specific industries. So SolarWorks, we did obviously for the solar industry. There's an image there of doing the solar layout on the on the rooftop. Um, offset part is usually about working with imported geometry. If you do a lot of um, uh, copy uh, or a lot of faces, uh, manipulation and tooling. That's really where that fits in. And quick drawings is we do a lot of framework. Um, so with that, we're going to. Uh, I think the last thing we're going to end off on is. Um, oh, sorry. The last uh, technical concept is the e drawings, and I think we have a couple things on 3D printing we wanted to announce. So on the e drawing side, um, there are some nice enhancements to the desktop side. Just being able to so, to. Uh, load in and support a lot of the new file formats and, and the content that's being created. So like the rotational explode that we saw yesterday, um, if you attended, um, that's fully supported. Uh, right down to 2D electrical drawings is nice. And then the e-drawings on the iPad has some really nice unique functionality as well. Um, you know, the most notable I would say is the augmented reality. So you can actually use the camera of your iPhone or uh, iPad, sorry, to see um, what's in front of you, and then you can put an e-drawing or a 3D model on top of that, and the orientation can be controlled by, um, by a QR code that you just have to print off and put down on the ground or on the desk. So it's just really nice to kind of mix the reality of you know, what doesn't exist yet and uh, what, what exists in front of you. So fantastic functionality that uh, you know, we should actually create some videos of it and uh, post them, but we, haven't, we don't quite have that ready to show yet. It is a really neat technology. I agree, Eric. I like that one a lot. So yeah, so eDrawings, uh, to finish it up here. So eDrawings, it's always been a, a really the easiest way to share your documents um, you know, in the past. With a lot of new enhancements now in 2014 uh, with the support of simulation, electrical, and uh, you know, Rotex and all these things, really it just takes it to the next level, uh, eDrawings. So if you're not using it, definitely uh, keep your ears uh, tuned into this one because you're going to learn a lot of new things about eDrawings. So exploded views, for example, they're now uh, available to, to show in eDrawings. So you can actually show the animated exploded view. And if you were here for our uh, presentation on Tuesday, you noticed that we have a rotate explode now in 2014 for SolidWorks. So we can actually show that in eDrawings as well. So it's really nice to be able to show uh, you know, how to remove this clamp in an e-drawing sort of animation you can easily send to, to anyone you want. Also, multiple SolidWorks flow simulation plots can be exported into a single e-drawings file. This really greatly simplifies collaboration. You can export all these different uh, flow plot results to a single e-drawings file and just send that one file out and allow other people to sort of interrogate it and choose which plots uh, they want to view. So instead of having a separate file for every single plot or a separate uh, photo, you can just have one eDrawings file and have multiple uh, results that they can choose. Also the simulation results, if you recall this sort of piano looking object here, they're now also available as well uh, for added clarity. So in 2014 with eDrawings, you can uh, display the results of your analysis in full 3D model. And you, even if you use the, uh, you know, simplification or symmetry, you can export that and show this. So again, it's really nice to be able to collaborate and allow other people to view your results without having to, you know, create pictures or whatnot. Also, to uh, visualize the dimensions and the tolerances, the dim expert dimensions you use can also be exported to eDrawings. So it's really nice to be able to share all the details of the manufacturing information of this components and all the different configurations and everything through the DIM expert. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to create a detailed view for every single uh, piece. You can just export the DIM expert dimensions into the eDrawings and people can look at them uh, themselves. Also, electrical engineers and technicians will enjoy having direct access to their entire electrical project and schematic. So basically, if you're uh, using SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you can export the whole project out as a single eDrawings file. So in addition, the multi-platform desktop and mobile applications also ensure that uh, everything is within reach. So as we're going to show in a minute, you can technically have this on an iPad 
if you want. And you can be walking around checking the schematics, making sure the link is correct and everything from your iPad while you're on the shop floor. So it really does uh, really boost up how you can communicate and also interrogate uh, other people's design data. And finally, uh, the creme de la creme, you can output and open it on your iPad. And when you're on your iPad, if you go to website 3D Content Central, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, you can uh, leverage the famous catalog of components uh, for SolidWorks. So we have a lot of components on there, a lot of uh, different vendors put them on there. And if you find one that you like and you open it on your iPad, there's a new option now that you can open this model from 3D Content Central all the way onto eDrawings itself. So your app the eDrawings app, you can actually uh, open it directly from a website and view it within your app. So it's a very powerful way to sort of browse materials, or uh, parts I should say, and open them directly in the app so you can rotate them around, see if they look right, if they're going to fit, and if not, you know, go back to the website and choose another one. So really no matter if you're using, uh, you know, a computer or a mobile device or anything else, Using eDrawings uh, is really the preferred method of communicating your designs now uh, in 2014, and I really like it. All right, so last thing that we wanted to cover today is on the 3D printing. Um, I know for uh, it's a little bit of a repeat from yesterday if you attend, but we are curious for, uh, for anybody new, well, for everybody out there, if you could answer it again, it would be great. Um, you know, what is your exposure to 3D printing? Is it something that you know about, or is it something that you think is just cool, or is it something that uh, you think would have an impact on your business? So, uh, so yeah, it'd be good to get that feedback and uh, and see where you're at with it. You know, there's a there's a prediction that 3D printing really does affect every industry. You know, if you talk to uh, uh, people that have been following the technology trend, it's um, you know as the price comes down and uh, and what the, the problems that it's solving increase, it's uh, you know we find that. Everybody should make a plan for um, you know where or how it's going to impact their industry. If it's not today, then it's in a number of years, right? So with that, let's uh, close up this poll. All right, perfect. All right, so a little bit of content on what's new. Um, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier on, but the biggest uh, thing that's new with 3D printing is that Stratasys purchased our, re our previous supplier of objects. So what that um, meant to our product line is that it opened up the doors for our, for all Stratasys printers, and uh, and they've been recategorized and grouped together. So there's the idea series printer, design series printers, and production printers. You know the idea series printers is really about um, entry level markets. Um, there's the Mojo printer that that starts right at that uh, ten thousand dollar mark, so very affordable for customers that uh, that just need to get into the market. Um, and it does have uh, like ABS type plastic parts, which is re which is really nice. The design series printers is a combination of both um, the previously referred to as object printers and some of the the older Stratasys printers. So they, they put them together in a single product line, and it's more it's about more advanced material selection, and it's about stronger parts. It's about increased accuracy and finish, and that sort of idea. And then lastly, the production series printers is really about uh, is opening up the doors to um, using printing as part of, part of a manufacturing part. So it's uh, printers are being used for printing molds. Um, they're also being used in end production for parts that uh, you're doing in low runs and stuff like that where it doesn't make economic sense to create molds. Um, so really, you know, again, it's about stronger materials, higher accuracy, better finishes. So that's really the way we break down our products. Um, the first step that we usually do with our customers is the materials. So with the new series of printers, we've had uh, new this year is a whole new series of materials that have been opened up to us. Um, so it is worthwhile looking through saying what are the materials that are available and what printers are capable of using these materials, which ones would be applicable to your particular industry. Um, we are finding that customers, as they look more into it, they realize that it's not just for prototyping anymore. It's about uh, the other parts of their business, so right for manufacturing, engineering, and all those other great stuff. Um, the newer industry that we're in is, again, just reiterating the molding and tooling is an area that, um, with because the 3D printing has gotten that much stronger, um, it's opening up the doors of possibilities that uh, just weren't, uh, weren't there before. So molding and tooling, end-use parts, um, where you just have options that you just couldn't do before. 
Um, another good uh, opportunity is jigs and fixtures. So customers don't uh, sometimes they don't recognize that uh, that there is a good amount of money and a lot of our customers going into these jigs and fixtures and uh, replacing all the processes with 3D printing can be a night and day difference to the cost of creating those. So a huge savings to be had. Um, and a couple quick screenshots, very quick on that uh, injection molding process. So you can print out the mold, put it directly into, uh, in this case, a 70 ton machine, and uh, and use it for production ready uh, ready parts. So you know, overall, the 3D printing has come a long way, and uh, and it is something that uh, should be on the radar for all companies. Um, so please just work with us and see, you know, what would be the most likely candidate, and uh, and figure out if the timing makes sense at some point or another. Um, so with that, we uh, we did the SolidWorks solution webinar today, and we're bang on time. So uh, you know, we we were trying to trim it down to end up on even less time, but it took the full hour. So appreciate your patience and uh, attentiveness. Um, tomorrow we have the SolidWorks electrical by our, our electrical team. So uh, anybody, if you have electrical at your at your company, I encourage you to send the links out to that that part of your business. And then um, you know that's about it. So appreciate everybody for coming. We'll end off the webinar with one last poll, just to get some feedback on um, you know whether we were uh, okay on the content or if uh, if you do uh, uh, selected something else, be aware that I might call you because we are curious on feedback and we want to put together even better material for you guys next year and in the future. So um, so you can fill that in would be great, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Any final comments, Jake? Um, solar access to the rocks. All right. <laughs> I love that one. I it really is, do. It is pretty amazing. So uh, the, the webinars, uh, just by, on a side note, the webinars that we did the last couple of days, um, we have been recording them. So the ones, uh, hopefully they're all um, you know, good enough quality to post and we'll make available. If not, the, I mean, a lot of this content we can make uh, available through other means as well. So let us know if you're interested and we'll, uh, we'll try.